Good morning. I beg your pardon. <laughs> I, I said good morning. <gasps> At last. I'm sorry. After all these years. What? Welcome, comrade, welcome. Sit down, rest your weary elbows. You'll take a glass of vodka. Mr. Dalliard, Mr. Dalliard, <laughs> break out the false passports and the rabbit skin hats. We are going to Moscow. <laughs> What news, Comrade Stalin in rude health, I trust? Wait, 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 wait a minute. All I said was good morning. Precisely. The code. <laughs> it is now 27 summers since Comrade Malensky stood slightly to the left of where you are now and told me that one day a man would come into this shop and give notice of his allegiance with the phrase, good morning. <laughs> and that on hearing those words, Mr Dalliard and I were to detonate our relatives and fly to Dover. <laughs> fly to Dover? where a man named Smith would see us safely onto a goods train delivering livestock to Minsk. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. <laughs> When I said good morning, all I meant was, you know, good morning. Oh. That's, that's, uh, that's all I meant. Ah. Oh, well, in that case, please accept my green felt apologies. <laughs> that's all right. I, I just came in here to, to buy a model. A model? Yes. A model? Yes. A model? Yes. A model? Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. I want to buy a model. With or without plastic struts. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. I, I just thought maybe a model aeroplane. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me ask a different question in the same way. Um, who is this aeroplane for? It's for my son. It's, it's his birthday. Your son? Yes. Just your son? Yes. Mm -hmm. And when is this birthday of his? Wednesday. Yes, that's what I said. When's the day? <laughs> no, Wednesday. Are you stupid or just plain dead? <laughs> Wednesday. Oh, you are genuinely stupid. I do apologize. <laughs> sorry, I thought you were just being deaf. Mr. Dalliard, command the earth to swallow me up. I do apologize, sir. Life must be hard enough for stupid people without tactless old bastards like that lady over there rubbing it into your face with salt widely. Mr. Dalliard, I've gone peculiar now. <laughs> so, in plain flavored English, when is your son's birthday? <laughs> The, the day after Tuesday. The day after... My word, doctors are so specific these days, aren't they? And are you expecting this boy to be a boy or a girl? <laughs> no, it's, it's my son. He's nine. This is going to be his tenth birthday. His tenth? Oh, sir, I fear you're spoiling him. I was only ever allowed one on my birthday, usually. Still, I dare say you know your own business best. Just don't come bleating to Mr Dalliard and me if this son of yours turns out to be one of those drug jockeys we're always reading about on television. Um, a glass of water? No, thank you. A cup of water? No. A plate of water, then? No, 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 thank you. I just want a model aeroplane. A model aeroplane of water? No, no. I, <laughs> forget the, I don't want any water. Forget the water. I just want to buy a model aeroplane. I thought perhaps the Messerschmitt 109E in the window. The Messerschmitt 109E in the window. That's right. Mm -hmm. Fizzy or still? <laughs> what? Uh, that doesn't count. I had my hand on my head. <laughs> just ignore anything I say when my hand is on my head. Right. So, the Messerschmitt 109E. Yes, and uh, I suppose some glue. Some glue? Then your son is already a drug jockey. <laughs> Mr. Dalliard and I warned you on bended legs, but would you listen to him? No, look at you. Hey ho. What's this? A Messerschmitt 109E and a fix for that degenerate junkie son of yours. <laughs> but he's already done. Sir? Well, the model's ready assembled. Well, you can't expect us to do all the work ourselves, sir. The whole joy of modelling lies in carefully scraping off the paint, soaking off the transfer, <laughs> taking the plane apart piece by piece, putting each piece into a small polythene bag, which is then sealed and placed inside the box. An achievement, something to be proud of. Rare words indeed in these days of supersonic hedgehog brothers and ready-sliced golf shots. <laughs> That's it. Just forget it. Forget it. I'll, I'll, I'll try somewhere else. Mr. Deliard has a gun trained on you through the curtain, sir. At a single word from me, he will blow your head clean off with as much mercy as if you were a helpless seal pup called Arnold. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm so sorry we couldn't help you, sir. We do try to accommodate our customers, but not being a hotel, we find it almost impossible. <laughs> Right, well, all I can say is this has not been a very good morning. Good morning, Mr. Dalliard! Mr. Dalliard, you've been activated after all these years. <laughs> what you got in there? I'm sorry? What you got in there, I wonder? Uh, a cat. You've got a mog in there, have you? You've got a kitty puss. <laughs> Lovely. This is Clover, my Daxie. 
I've always had daxes. I like smooth-coated daxes best. Really? Is that right? <laughs> mm. So, what sort of mogwog is your kissy puss? Hmm? <laughs> is it, um, uh, tapples or a tom-tom or what? Burmese. Ah, oh, Burmy. I love a Burmy. Is it a girl or a boy Burmy? Oh, Christ. Uh, it's, um, <laughs> it's male. Hello, Mr Burmy. What's your name, then? Yes, you can't speak, actually. <laughs> ah, but they can understand every word you say, can't they? Mm, not much evidence for that. <laughs> my first Daxie, my first ever Daxie, was called Scully. I named him after Hugh Scully, who presents the Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> I love that programme, don't you? Pervertedly. <laughs> do you know what I do of a Sunday? Every day after we've had our walk, cos Clover and I always go walkums of a Sunday, well, you know, just Clover and me and, of course, my little pooper scooper. Uh, 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 because that nasty parky man doesn't like to see poochy poop on his best grass, does he? No, so... Oh, Christ. And, of course, I don't like to see poochy poop on my best carpet, and if I do, Clover knows she can expect a visit from the smack fairy. <laughs> so we come back... And I make myself a cheese and tomato toasty. <laughs> a what? A cheese and what? Tomato. 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 Don't say it again. <laughs> I make myself a cheese and tomato toasty. Sometimes two toasties. And an old muggles of tea. And I just snudge it down in front of the television. And I watch the roadshow. Mm. I love my Sunday afternoonies. Jesus, God help. <laughs> and of course, if it isn't the roadshow, it might be that animal programme with Desmond. Desmond Morris. Ah, oh, yes, but we call him Desmond in our household because he's like a friend. He's like an old chum, is Desmond. <laughs> or we might watch MasterChef with Lloydie or The Closey Show with Jeff Banksy Wanksy. <laughs> we love our Sunday afters, don't we, Clover? <laughs> <laughs> So, what's wrong with Mr Burmy? What? Mr Burmy! Why is he coming to see Vetty Lou? Has he got a poorly tums? <laughs> Did you just say Vetty Lou? <laughs> Sore throaty? Hmm? What's the matter with Mr Burmy? I brought him in to be killed. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse you? He's got cancer of the liver. I brought him in to be put to death. Cancer? Yes. Cancer of the liver? Yes. Cancy wancy. Oh. <laughs> you got cancy diddlies then, have you, Mr. Burmy? You're going to be put to deathies, are you? Is your little heart going to be made to stoppy wop wop? <laughs> are they going to go killy chum chums? Are they going to put your coldy woldy body wad in the groundy wound, are they? Eh? Hey? Clover? Yeah? <laughs> What can I do for you? I'd like to have this man put down, please. <laughs> <laughs>
What he's done is he's spotted the craggy Morlander in me, and uh, <laughs> he knows the way clients to be treated with respect, not your average walk-in, quick turnover merchants. Ah, Dolmades, for my two beautiful English gentlemen. Great. Ah, oh, looks good. Oh, it's very good. My special friends, eh? What is this? Dolmades, stuffed vine leaves. Stuffed vine leaves? <laughs> is he trying to take us for a ride? <laughs> it's a classic Greek dish. A classic Greek... God, what am I, a peasant or a busy executive? <laughs> <laughs> Do you like my absolute darling? Uh, yes, everything's fine. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, my friend doesn't like dolmades. Ah, but you asked for dolmades. Yes, he, he didn't know what they were. I knew... <laughs> <laughs> no, everything's just fine. Thank you. All right, come on, Gordon, let's get out of here. This is just a tourist trap. In Stevenage? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> this is good, Stuart. Oh, Jesus, Gordon, these guys must have seen you just coming a mile off. D don't you want your dolmades, then? Do I want to push a stuffed vine leaf through my face? No, in <laughs> I don't. Well, if you don't mind, I'll have yours. I'm starving. Oh, oh, that is it. This, this wine is corked. It can't be corked. It's got a metal top. <laughs> don't get clever. Just taste it. Wait up. Delicious. Delicious? It's got something in it. Uh, yes, my excellent friends. It's resonated. Exactly. Waiter, this wine has... What was it? Resonated. This wine has resonated in the bottle. Oh, yes, it's Retsina. It's supposed to be like that, Stu. They had pine needle resins. Yeah, thanks for your input, Gordon, but I hope I know my wines. I can fork out on an encyclopedia of world wines for nothing. <laughs> the Retsina is very good. This is very good, man, actually. This is one of the best I've ever tasted. What is it? Okay. You're going to invite me to the wedding, presumably? Give me pardon? You two are getting married, I take it. <laughs> Stu. No, no, no. Obviously, I mean, a six-year friendship just goes out the window if you're going to start siding with some Greco against me. I mean, I think maybe everything's not all right for my two lovers, eh? And you can cut that out for a second. <laughs> listen, Stu. No, right? you listen, mush. Why do you were marking time doing linguophone courses of the ancient world? I was out there pounding the streets of Tiverton learning a sunning trade. <laughs> Why do you tan your hairy ass on the new beaches of <coughs> Crete or wherever it was, swilling turpentine and <laughs> stuffing violins with a bunch of perverts? I was out there getting my master's degree in the University of Hard Knocks and Tough Surprises. <laughs> to you or your fancy lover boy. Where are you going? I can bring your omelette if you like, sir. Oh, forget it. I've had enough, Gordon. I'm going out for an honest British kebab. Who's had a chance to look at Romeo and Juliet since last week? <laughs> anybody? No. Uh, uh, well, I know, you know, you've all been busy. It's difficult to make time. But uh, anybody at all? No. OK, good. Right, so you'll, you're all coming to it fresh. That's probably better, in fact. In fact, well done. Good. Um, right, now, uh, first of all, th uh, this is Mr Lewis. He's just popped in to see how we're all getting on. Uh, just ignore him. Uh, well, don't ignore him, but, uh, you know... Uh, well, here, here's an interesting I wonder, who can tell me what ignore means? Anyone tell me what ignore means? <laughs> Nobody. Right. OK. Uh, ignore means um, uh, not to pay too much attention to something, not to be all, all that... Uh, Tony, wake up. Uh, thanks. Uh, not to be all that bothered by something. Uh, if you like, Tony was ignoring me just then, OK? So, so that's ignore. Right. Uh, well, who'd like me to write it down? Should we write it down? Hands up. Who'd like me to write it down? Ignore. No one. OK, so we're happy with ignore. Good. All right, then. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Rosie, it's, uh, it's B-A-S-T-A-R-D. Yeah? Otherwise, good. Um, <laughs> right. Now, Romeo and Juliet. Uh, what do you think? Should, should we talk about it first and then read it? Or, 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 I mean, hands up, who'd like to talk about it first? No. OK, well, I agree. Let's, let's just get straight in and read it, for heaven's sake. I um, always like to get him involved as soon as possible. OK, so, <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. Um, do we have a Juliet? Who'd like to read Juliet? Anybody? Anybody like to... What about a Romeo? Oh, we've got to have a Romeo, yeah? A couple of Romeos. Maybe what? One, one Romeo, eh? Uh, no. OK, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll read them both, because then you can get a chance to... <laughs> this is Juliet speaking, right? Uh, uh, will thou be gone? It's not yet, yet near day. Uh, it was the nightingale, not the lark, um, uh, uh, that pierced the, the fearful hollow of thine ear. Um, likely she sings on yon pomegranate tree. <laughs> Believe me, love, it was the nightingale. Uh, this is Romeo now. Um, it was the lark, the herald of the morn, no nightingale. Look, love, what envious streaks do lace the severing clouds in yonder east. OK, now, phew. Um, right. <laughs> Having heard that, from what you've just heard, what relevance do you think Romeo and Juliet has to today's Britain? Who, who thinks it's got any, any, any relevance at all? No one. Okay, right. So, 
So we think it's irrelevant, do we? Ah, uh, interesting. Right, so nobody... We don't think it's relevant. We don't think it's irrelevant either, yeah? <laughs> it's, sort of, it's sort of in between, yeah? It's in a kind of a grey area. Now, it's interesting. Good, well done. Um, <laughs> so, why do you think... Why do you think Shakespeare wrote something that was in a grey area? What did he mean by it? Did he mean anything by it? Or maybe he's just, just being stupid. Um, who thinks that? Hands up those people who think Shakespeare was being stupid. No, so, all right, no, that was stupid. No, that, I was being stupid. So we don't think Shakespeare was stupid. But he was writing in a grey area. Why? All right, why you all think about that one, I'm just going to come out with an opinion. <laughs> it is just an opinion, so you can all shout me down as usual. Um, and that is that R Romeo and Juliet is about love. Uh, we have love, we do love in today's Britain. So Romeo and Juliet, therefore, isn't, wasn't, irrelevant. <laughs> think about that. Any, anybody agree with that? Right, no, so nobody agrees with it, but did anyone find it helpful at all? <laughs> nobody. Right. No, you're right. I, yeah. I was being unhelpful there. Oh, that's stupid of me. I shouldn't. <laughs> I've, just got, I've just clouded the whole issue now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just holding you back. Um, well, who'd like me to stay? I mean, hands up those people who'd like me to stay. Would you like me to... <laughs> no one. Right. I, I, no, I agree. I agree, you're right. <laughs> Another one, please, Barbon. You sure? What? Don't, no offence, but this will be a seventh. You just keep him coming. Right up. Your funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. Come again? My wife. Oh. She doesn't understand me. She's never understood me. What, uh, Polish or something, is she? <laughs> you, ever been, you ever been trapped in a loveless marriage with a woman you despised? Whew, not since I was nine. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like it straight up? What? Or with ice? Ice. I oh, know. Cocktail onion? No, thanks. She takes no interest in my friends, you know? She laughs at my peanuts. Hobbies. <laughs> She doesn't even value my crinkle cut cheesy what's it <laughs> career. You know, it's just so depressing. All right, so other men have got larger plums, <laughs> salaries, and better prospects, and, and other men can, can boast a healthier looking stool. <laughs> Lifestyle. All right, you know, so, so I, I haven't got loads of cash hanging around. You know, but why complain? Other people are worse off. I've got a job. I've got two sweet, rosy nibbles. <laughs> she's always going on and on and on about my appearance. I mean, it's not as if she's an oil painting. You know, I mean, frankly, she's plain and prawn-flavoured. <laughs> she, she's not as young as she used to be herself. I don't know why I bother with women. I'd be better off being a fruit. <laughs> monk or a hermit or something. At least if I was a fag. <laughs> At least if I was a monk, you know, I wouldn't have to put up with women, you know, women going on and on and can talk the hind leg off a camel. <laughs> you know, some of us, I couldn't live without women. Here in a monastery, the best you can hope for is a bit of chocolate hobnob. <laughs> Peace and spirituality. And let's face it, we haven't slept together for years. You know, the best I can hope for is a bit of savoury finger. <laughs> Christmas. And naturally, she won't let me give her so much as a good juicy tongue in the back passage. <laughs> it's a, a peck on the cheek. Crazy uh, weekend just passed, sir. May I inquire as to whether sir was in receipt of an enjoyableness or did events prove themselves <laughs> to be of an otherwise nature? Uh, no, very pleasant, thank you. Very pleasant, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. <laughs> then, uh, might I take it, sir, that for that period you were not within the boundaries of Lincolnshire, where I understand it rained like a bitch? <laughs> uh, no, I was nowhere near Lincolnshire. Sir, I am uplifted to hear something. Uh, no, my wife and I spent the weekend in Hull. 
<laughs> Sir is married? Yes. I had literally no idea. <laughs> Never mind. Sir, my remissness in failing to felicitate Sir upon the joyousness in good tidings is something I fear I shall have to live with for the rest of my life. <laughs> now, to business. Being one of the shrewdest sirs who has ever swum into my purview, may I take it that sir is keen to exploit the financial and social advantages inherent in having a haircut? Uh, a haircut, that's right, yes. Of course, a haircut is a hair enhanced. If sir will entirely fail to slash my throatlet for being so old. <laughs> now, sir, the hair in question is? What? The hair currently under advisement belongs to? What do you mean? What do I mean? Yes. <laughs> sir, I sneak myself towards the suspicion that Sir has cast me as the mouse in his ever-popular cat drama. <laughs> it's my hair. I want you to cut my hair. Your hair? Yes. So your own hair is the hair upon which this entire transaction is to be funded. What a Why would I come in here to get you to cut someone else's hair? <laughs> <laughs> sir, please set fire to my legs if you think I'm trying to make uh, <laughs> hair cutting sound more romantic and glamorous than it really is. But believe me when I tell you that in my position, one cannot be too careful. Really? <laughs> yes, indeed, sir. Once, and once only, have I had to cut the hair of a gentleman against his will. And believe me when I tell you that it was both difficult and impossible. <laughs> no, well, it's my hair. Your hair? Yes. Now, sir, we proceed to that most <laughs> important of stages. Which one? <laughs> Which one what? Which of the manifold hairs upon Sir's crisp and twinkling headage <laughs> would Sir like to place in my professional care for the purposes of securing an encampment? <laughs> All of them. All of them, yes. Sir is entirely sure. Well, of course I'm sure. What's the matter with you? Sir, I seek not to question the profoundness of Sir's wonder. <laughs> Did it express my own humbleness at the prospect of so magnificent a charge? No. <laughs> well, all of them. All of them? Yes. All of them? Yes. My word. Is that a problem? Oh, no, indeed, sir. No, indeed, sir. Not a problem, sir. So far from being a problem, sir, as you <laughs> would not believe. I merely hope that sir can take time off from what I know is a very hectic schedule to appreciate that for me to cut all the hairs on sir's head represents the snow-capped summit of a barber's career. <laughs> well, you've done it before, haven't you? Oh, 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 yes, indeed, sir. Yes, I once cut all the hairs on a gentleman's head in Cairo shortly after the war, when the world was in uproar and to a young man everything seemed possible. <laughs> what? It would be bootless to deny that I was a younger and better looking barber then, but uh, let's hope that the magic has not entirely disappeared up its own rabbit hole. We shall see. We shall wait see. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait one cotton picking minute here. <laughs> You've cut someone's hair, all of it that is, once since the war. So would prefer it if in the sphere of total hair cutation I was to him a virgin? <laughs> yes, that I can respect. What? The desire that we should both of us embark upon this journey together as innocents, as wide-eyed travellers to a distant land, unknowing of our fate, careless of our destination, to emerge someday, somewhere, bruised, sad, a little wiser perhaps, but ultimately and joyously alive. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Well, my colleague, 1,740 seconds have elapsed since first we welcomed the viewing several into our lives for another evening of entertainment and hatred. My colleague, you've opened your mouth and a great truth has come out. I'll save you embarrassment by pretending you never said that or anything like it. He's firm, but he's fair. In the great sandwich of broadcasting, we at a bit of fry and lorry are perhaps but a thin slice of turkey breast. We nourish, but we don't cause wind. <laughs> I could have put it better myself. What more he could do? He could. So now, my colleague, we have to sweep up the broken shards and decaying lumps of the evening, gather them into an old towel and heave them over the side. Fair breaks your heart, doesn't it? I turn to you now, my colleague, and I ask you to gaze down at the drinks menu and fix us a debonair cocktail selection. Oh, well, now this is a difficult choice. Choose carefully, my colleague. One choice brings certain death, the other freedom. Well, now, you'd expect me to choose the silver prostate, but then you'd know that I'd know that you'd expect that. So, really, I should choose the boiling idiot. But the boiling idiot's got Campari in it, and he knows that I hate Campari, so... So? So, it'll be the silver prostate. Ha! You've chosen wisely, little one. Yoda has taught you well. <laughs> The silver prostate does indeed bring freedom. Now, to prepare a silver prostate at home, you will need seven of the following. A cocktail shaker, a cocktail shaker shaker, that's me, a helping of liquori strega, 
an assistance of Parfait Amour, lovely purple violet liqueur there, a tit of Maker's Mark bourbon, a rash of Bailey's Irish cream to throw away, <laughs> square lumps of frozen water sculpted into the shape of ice cubes, <laughs> and a farewell from newsreader Andrew Harvey, digitally recorded off air. Well, that's the national and international news tonight. <laughs> While I mix these together, I turn to the debonair doyen of the dance, and I ask, as askingly as I might, this ask. Please, Mr. Music, will you play? Twist. <laughs> <laughs>